I think one of the most important features is that it's really like an instrument. And so it's done in the exact normal surgical sequence that we do. So we make our clear corneal incision, we put in viscoelastic, and then instead of putting in a cystotome or a forceps, you put in the uh, zepto through the clear corneal incision, you retract the rod, it opens up. Uh, the steps are mainly to center it on the visual axis. Uh, the central area is actually clear. There's a little window. Uh, so uh, there's actually a way for the patient to fixate through that clear opening on the Purkinje images uh, you know, of the micro, uh, on the microscope light. And you are then, uh, the surgeon is centering it on the Purkinje uh, images. Uh, and then uh, basically there's a little console. It's very small and uh, a circulating nurse could operate this uh, and you basically first apply the suction. You see the little bubbles move with the suction. Then the surgeon says uh, energy and that creates the cut. And then the final step is the release of the suction uh, and then you simply pull the device out uh, um, and it unfolds uh, on its own because again of the, the nitinol ring being very collapsible. Well, of course, uh, all IOLs uh, require a centered uh, round capsulorexis or capsulotomy. So really, it's used for all of the IOLs that, that I use, uh, both monofocal uh, and then all the premium lenses, whether it be multifocal or extended depth of focus, toric, uh, and so forth. Well, I think the beauty of Zepto is just the flexibility to use it in a number of different situations. Uh, but uh, it's, it's really fantastic, for example, for the white cataract, uh, for the, the small pupil. So uh, I don't think it's uh, mutually exclusive with having a femtosecond laser, uh, because again, with complicated cases, uh, there's really, if the patient's not having a refractive IOL and just needs a monofocal IOL, there's really no reimbursement with the femto in that situation uh, either. So uh, the fact that it is so versatile, you don't have to use it on, you, you may just use it on a very small select number of patients. I think it's just wonderful to, to have in your surgical armamentarium. The learning curve is actually quite easy uh, because you have to uh, basically learn how to extend the rod which elongates the tip so that it passes through a small incision. Uh, and then the uh, sequence is really a matter of calling out the steps that you want. Uh, suction, cutting, and then release of the suction. Uh, so uh, that's one of the beauties uh, of it. And I would say certainly after a couple cases, one is going to be pretty proficient uh, uh, at that. So I, I think that's really one of the great things about it is that the learning curve is so short. Yes, well I think that of course is one of the uh, important things that SEPTO brings to the table and it's a totally different cost structure uh, you know, the unit itself is on the order of 10,000 U.S. dollars. Uh, and then depending on the volume, uh, you know, one would expect to pay somewhere, let, let's say a starting point of about 150 uh, U.S. dollars uh, per instrument or single use. But there's really no other uh, costs involved. And I think uh, those, again, are, are things that can change depending on the volume uh, that one has. And so I think that's one benefit. There's next to no real investment on the part of the surgery center. And so people don't have to commit to using it on a certain number of cases for the next five years. They can try it out uh, on, in different situations and make an individual decision on when they want to use it. Uh, but you know, whenever we do complicated cases, we, we incur certain costs with devices, whether they be a a pupil expansion ring, a capsule tension ring, tripan blue dye. Uh, but overall, uh, it probably is cost effective when it prevents complications from occurring in those uh, complicated cases. And then with premium IOLs, I think uh, the way that many people have uh, uh, 
uh, you know, justified the cost of femto is that the, the patient is already you know, paying, making a significant investment uh, in their outcome, and we want to be able to give them all of the, uh, the best services and the best technologies we can as part of that uh, premium IOL outcome, and so Zepto, again, would fit into that model as well. Uh, the beauty, though, is it gives the surgeon the flexibility to really decide when to use it without having to make some type of commitment on volume to justify uh, the large expenditure. There's no large upfront expenditure, and certainly you don't have the, the maintenance uh, costs on an annualized basis. One of the interesting things about Zepto is, uh, again, being able to center it while the patient is actually fixating on the operating microscope light. Uh, and so at least it creates that theoretic possibility that you can actually put the capsular axis uh, and center it on fixation while the patient's actively uh, fixating. So there's really uh, no other good way to do that at present time. Uh, and although you can center the lens, uh, uh, in the pseudophagic state on the operating table, it's already too late if you've created the capsulotomy. So the idea here is if you can center the capsulotomy on the visual axis, then it's going to be quite easy to have the lens center and line up with that.